Now, do any of you know this program? I'm Mike Wolf. And I'm Frank Fretz. And we're pickers. We travel the back roads of America looking for rusty gold. We're looking for amazing things buried in people's garages and barns. We'll buy anything we think we can make a buck on. We make a living telling the history of America one piece at a time. Now, it's one of the most popular programmes in the world when it comes to antiques. And we have one of the most successful and well-known antique dealers in Ireland in studio, Roddy Keary, because American Pickers is the name of that programme and American Pickers is filming in Waterford. Good morning, Roddy. Good morning, Damien. How are you? Good, thank you. Very good this morning. Tell us about the exciting news that's happening this week. Uh, this week we have the uh, Irish production of American Pickers coming to the auction rooms, and which is exciting for Waterford and for ourselves, the auction rooms. What is uh, the programme? Tell us about the programme. The programme program is where you get a, a, a member to buy something of Waterford interest and historically maybe of interest in Waterford or outside. We have some items that would be. Um, the crew are Irish, the presenters are Irish, but it's going to be put out in England and America. So it's, uh, it's, a, big, it's a big event. That is really good publicity. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Now, we, we have been on programmes before, uh, which have been fantastic as well, but this seems to be hitting the highlights as because it's a very popular programme. Not that I'm that much into it, because as you know, when you're involved in it every day, you're inclined to pass it at night, but it's, it's a bit of big interest to people. So not only in terms of the crew being here, doing the filming and stuff like that, you've got the, the knock-on effect, and this may well be very good advertising for Waterford. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you can be on the trail of an antique show as they are, they have done the North, they were telling me. Uh, They have been down south for a week and uh, we're part of it. So that that to me is is big. And we're not a big nation as regard collectors in Ireland, but we, we can get there for the amount of population that we have. So, I mean, we sell on the internet and uh, it has been growing and growing the whole time. So from that perspective, hopefully it'll carry on. How long are you in business? I started uh, with my late father. I'm fort- going into my 48th year, believe it or not. Wow. Which is a bit of a, a milestone. <laughs> um, started in Kilmac Thomas and uh, we had a general business there. My father started the antique business. Uh, he uh, moved to town in 19, into Waterford in 1964 opened the shop in 69 and I started the auctions in 97 in Waterford but we were doing a few of them in Kilmac uh, always you know Are you still enjoying it? I'm enjoying it but getting tired this course is age related I would say <laughs> but I do enjoy it I have to say and it, 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 there's a reward at the end of it if you sell something for somebody and they do well of course, it doesn't win the whole time, but uh, no, I, I, I do. I, I knock a bit of... Uh, do you still get the buzz? Oh, I get the buzz. I, there's no question. Yeah, it, I get the buzz. Where does that buzz come? Is it, is it during the sale? Uh, it's, is it- it's first and foremost to see your audience and you have to get up there and perform for six to eight, eight hours nonstop. And uh, th- that in itself, to do well for somebody is the, the whole thing and to get a recognition at the end of it. Um, but it's, 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 it's difficult work. I mean, people just think they arrive into the auction, there's 700 lots, and he gets up there and he's selling away. It's not like that. An there's awful a lot, lot of preparation. A lot of preparation. We're doing a lot this week on retailing in Waterford City County and the South East and the future of retailing. Um, what's your view at the minute about how things are? Well, we would be a, sort of a destination shop. Yes, We don't have what we call walking off the streets. We would be specifically targeted by somebody who comes for something. Not like a retail uh, dress shop or a clothes shop where they come in and lift and pull and drag and, you know, and walk out without anything. Most people come in and say, Will we, may we have a look around? And then I don't see such and such an item. And then you show them where they have missed or whatever. And they do their business and they're gone. Um, we don't have a lot of uh, in, the input of people has gone down because now that we have a website they can press a button at night which is sort of sad there's a lot to be said I, I'm a doubting Thomas 
I love to go in and feel it and see it and that. But it's the modern way of doing things. People are too busy. And if it's still getting income into your business, then that's, a- that, that's the absolutely. way. Absolutely. It has been growing. The graph is going up the whole time on our, uh, on our uh, uh, sales through the Internet. And tell us about issues such as rates. Oh, my goodness. That's a little sore point with me. And now that I'm off the drink at the moment, I can, I can, I can keep quiet about it as such. Uh, our rates went up by 15,000, not up to up by 15,000. And do you mind me asking from what to what? Uh, from uh, uh, from 14.5 to 29.5. In the last? In the last four years. Have you and been, that to uh, me uh, is uh, uh, horrendous. Have you been given a reason? Uh, the reason is we improved our premises. And that was by putting in a window, which improves the street uh, shopping uh, side of it and also in, improves your business but I mean we had to do it because our business was going down to Swanee but I think they have it wrong if you're going to increase rates you do it over a, a number of years you're hit together with a big lump sum and it's very difficult to get out of that I mean we had a restaurant down Willem Street uh, Shea Kays. they closed recently due to rates anybody that's opening a business Never think of the rates until they have the business done with the landlord and the rent is manageable. But when the rates come in, they're sunk. And the problem I see too is we're not getting a lot from the rates. One time you got the rubbish collected, you got the sewage looked after and you got the water looked after. They are three extras on the rates at the moment for a, for a, for a retailer. So I, know I, I know you'd have to pay Irish water, uh, obviously, as you say, money on that. It's sewerage? Sewerage, yeah. If you have a problem with the sewerage coming out to their sewerage pipes, you have to pay for that. Yes. Also, the rubbish. Well, that's a big concern at the moment. The rubbish collection is expensive, particularly uh, shop. You have a lot of packaging now. And were you able to query the increase in the rates. I went to the appeals board in Dublin and uh, typically a uh, countryman, I was left sitting and more or less, that's it. There was no sort of response to it at all and I I had a gentleman working for me and he pleaded the case but just that's it. There was no no climb so, down. So you just have to get on with it? Get on with it, yeah, which is a big, it's a fierce slice of money. You know, and I I feel for anybody starting in business today, look at the expenses behind it. And I'll tell you, you will be lucky to scratch a living. The council would say that obviously there has to be a a certain amount of rates. Absolutely. We're not disagreeing with that. And they will negotiate at certain levels because it's for the betterment of the city and the county. I, I will. I will not disagree with that. But the, the, the last roundup of the rates, which I was involved in, they said there were winners and losers. But our street is not a pedestrian street. Parking is a major problem. And when we have an auction, uh, we have people collecting the day after for two days. They have collections, and I'm very strict on that. And uh, the traffic warden gives us a hell of a lot of bad time. And it's just not easy to do a business. So, uh, you know, they need to look at a lot of things, but they also need to speak to the people that are in the shops, that are running businesses. They're not listening to those. And that's where I see the problem. Why aren't they listening, do you think? They just have this budget in their head that we have to collect so much. And that's the end of it. There's no... Like, I see a little shop there now in... in, I pass it every morning in um, Michael Street. A centre, I think it is. And this big 40 foot has to come every morning with supplies and he has nowhere to park. And the other morning, I held up the traffic for him to get him some way parked. And I felt so sorry for him because we have a truck on the road and we know what it's like, but he's a 40 foot. So the new council is in there now and it's a, an amalgam of different parties. Mm. Uh, what's your central message to them? Well, my central message to them is to come if somebody has a gripe with the council to that they would the rep, they would go to the representative speak to them look at the situation go to the council see what they have to say and then if there's a major dispute the council have to come and speak to the the person concerned but 
I do see a major problem with Waterford. We need people to come in. You go to any of the other small towns. I was in Kilkenny recently on a Monday morning. Everybody had tables and chairs outside their shops and restaurants that they could serve coffee. And the atmosphere was fantastic. I would never be in Kilkenny on a Monday morning. I was there on business. But that's where I think we just need more. I also think the traffic should be flowing down Baron Strand Street. You could be dead for a a night and they wouldn't be found until the morning with no atmosphere in the centre of that town. And I think that's very sad. We need people in the centre. We need people walking and, and, and able to get to their businesses and do business. Also, it's, a, it's another major factor. We have a very good parking facility in Bow Street Car Park. But you get your ticket and you have it for two hours or one hour. But you're doing business and the next thing, and I've often found that I've lost business because the person, I have to go because the ticket is up. And, uh, and I've said to the council, get a barrier and charge for the amount of time that the, that the person is parked. And then I've lost a lot of business on account of it. But uh, these are things I, I, I'm maybe getting old and uh, my temperance is gone. You'll stay for at least another two years in business. You'll make it to 50 years. I'll make it to 50 years with the help of God. And, and, then, and then I'll draw a line. And then see what happens. I will. I'll draw a line on it then. I think enough is enough. Good luck this week. Good luck with the filming. Thank you very much, Damien. Thanks, Roddy. The very best to look with that. Uh, special mention to Roddy from his old school pal, Richie. And also a big thanks to Brian O'Halloran for everything he gave for this county. Memories will last a lifetime. Up to Dacia. And that is from Dan. We'll have more of your texts and comments. And we have a really exciting announcement about a big conference that's coming to Waterford.